firstly, thank you to everyone joining today to take the time to join us for our webinar, Works in Action, Supporting Camping Ministry. Um, as we start, I would like to acknowledge that I come to you from Toronto, the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ashinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and now is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuits, and Métis people. Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. As I say that, I also think about what that means for us here currently, what the treaties that govern this area were intended to be and how we might make that more fully realized. So I encourage you to think about where you are joining from, not, not just acknowledging where you are, but what you may do with that knowledge. So welcome everybody and thank you again for joining. My name is Eric Lofort and I'm the United Church of Canada Foundation lead. And as many of you know, the foundation has named Communities of Faith one of our four priorities. Our Seeds of Hope granting program is always welcoming applications for new unique projects, especially those that celebrate and encourage children and youth and facilitate experiencing faith and spirituality. Every year, thousands of young people attend United Church camps, creating community and strengthening relationships with one another, with creation and with God. Today, we are excited to present a fantastic panel of grant recipients representing various summer camps. And now I'd like to introduce our moderator for this webinar, Cam Fraser. Cam is currently the Director of Growth and Ministry Development with the United Church of Canada General Council Office and has previously dedicated, uh, directed two United Church summer camps as an adult, sharing time between congregational and camping ministries. He directed Ryerson Camp in Southern Ontario and Lumsden Beach Camp in Southern Saskatchewan. After being reluctantly signed up by his mother to be a leader in training at 14 years old, Cam instantly fell in love with camp and spent most summers after that engaged in one way or another. This coming summer, his kids will attend both United Church run camps he has previously directed. His daughter Lily moved to camp uh, at two weeks old and learned to walk in the dining hall. So without further delay, I will pass this over to Cam to start by introducing our panelists for today. Thank you, Cam. Yeah, thanks so much, Eric. Um, lovely, lovely to be here. Um, I love camp. I think camp is amazing. Um, when, when one's name is Cam, working at camp is awesome because you will often hear things like people say camp is amazing, camp is the best thing ever. And if you intentionally mishear that, you will often hear that Cam is the best thing ever, Cam is amazing. Um, and it's an instant ego boost. So if you know someone named Cam, get them working at camp, friends. Um, I am so glad to introduce three amazing panelists uh, who are here today um, uh, to talk about the importance of camp. Uh, first, we'd like to introduce uh, Brendan Turner uh, from Sparrow Lake United Church Camp. Um, he's the executive director there. Uh, this is a uh, camp located 90 minutes north of Toronto, Ontario. Um, Brendan has been attending and working at summer camp since he was six years old and is passionate about creating space for kids to build community and to explore their strengths in the great outdoors. He works year-round planning and preparing for each summer at camp and loves to watch the camp community grow and change each year as it evolves with the world around it. So welcome, Brendan. We'll look forward to hearing more shortly. I want to uh, welcome uh, Janice Noble. Uh, throughout the past five years, Janice has been working with hundreds of campers, community members, and staff at Camp Kidston uh, in near Bedford, Nova Scotia, a United Church camp uh, in rural Nova Scotia. Um, Janice is passionate about giving back to the camp community and currently volunteers on the board of directors the Camping Association of Nova Scotia and PEI, and as coordinator for the Outdoor Ministries Institute of the United Church of Canada. Her love for camp is contagious, and her favorite part of Kidston includes the peaceful calm of paddling on the lake and the joyful energy of playing gaga ball with campers. So welcome, Janice. And finally, we'd like to uh, welcome and introduce Anwar Aljouj from Camp Cosmos. Anwar is the assistant director of the Montreal City Mission, uh, trained as a lawyer in Italy and after practicing law in Israel, Anwar moved to Montreal and completed a master's of social work at McGill University. Uh, since 2016, he has been the coordinator of Ma'an Ensemble, uh, Montreal City Mission's intercultural program. And Anwar's fluency in Arabic and Hebrew has facilitated interfaith relations and community building. So, bonjour and welcome, Anwar. <laughs> Um, so friends, we're, uh, we're going to dive right in. Um, we'd like to invite you each to take uh, a moment to introduce yourself and then introduce the summer, summer camp that you are representing um, today. And uh, we'll, maybe we'll go in the order in which you were uh, introduced. So we'll invite Brendan to start. 
Thank you, Cam. Uh, I had a great friend, well, I still have a great friend named Cam that I met at camp. And uh, you're absolutely right. There's a Cam and Camp go together. Uh, I am the director at Sparrow Lake Camp. I've been here since 2019. Before that, I was working at another a couple camps before that as well. So I've been doing camp for a really long time. And uh, I just love it. I think the most important thing about camp is just the community that you can create with one another. And uh, that magic that happens each summer when a different mix of people come together and just create a whole new experience. And uh, that, I think, is just what keeps me coming back for more because it's just always exciting and always something new. Sparrow Lake Camp is the oldest of the United Church camps, as far as I've been told. Uh, the cabins you see behind me were built in 1927, and the camp is always in need of repair and new roofs and uh, all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's a pretty exciting place to work and always keeps me busy. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brendan. We're going to invite Janice to hop in. Thanks, Cam. Um, unlike both of you, I do not know any Cams that work at camp, but I will uh, work on recruiting some. <laughs> um, as Cam mentioned, uh, I work for Camp Kidston. I'm the executive director there. I actually never went to summer camp as a child, not once, um, but I came to camp in my late teens and it was life changing. So I have stuck around since then. Um, Camp Kidston is located in rural Nova Scotia um, and has been building outdoor experiences for children, youth, and families since 1966. So we're just about to approach our 60th anniversary. Um, our mission is to nurture personal and spiritual growth through outdoor adventure within an intentionally inclusive community. And that is something that we try to live up to and to fulfill each day, um, both at camp during the summer and year round through other programs that we run. Um, our outdoor programs range uh, from out tripping, environmental education, sports, games, low elements, arts and crafts, swimming, canoeing, kayaking, uh, you name it, all the classic camp activities. And through that, we um, allow children and youth to develop new friendships, independence, and also leadership skills. Um, as I briefly mentioned, Camp Kidston is also widely used throughout the year by schools and other nonprofit groups, um, and it serves as a unique location for gathering community in a rural part of Nova Scotia that doesn't otherwise have access to many um, public recreation facilities. So our mission really is something that we try and live year round at camp. Thanks so much, Janice. Um, and, and from from spaces outside of the city to a space at the heart of the city, Anwar, uh, we'd love to hear more about you and the work that you're a part of. Yes. Hi, good morning, everybody. And really, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak about the Camp Cosmos and the MCM programs here in Montreal. The Camp Cosmos, that it's the oldest uh, program of the MCM. It's um, 52 years this year. And it's... Uh, how I can say it, it's, it's, it's for many of the uh, refugee and the newcomer uh, families, it is the first station where they come and see the new reality, the new place that they came here. And being a welcome, welcoming place, multicultural place uh, with uh, more than 26 uh, languages, diversity, uh, different uh, backgrounds, I, I see it. It's it's more than than uh, six weeks of a, a summer camp. It's a place where people got the opportunity really to know a new friends, to create a, a new friendship, a place where uh, they can leave their kids there for uh, during the day and go outside and do their uh, bureaucratic uh, you know uh, business. It's it's um. The approach here at the Camp Cosmos is really, it's a, it's a place welcoming everybody and doesn't matter really if you have money uh, 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 to pay or not. We are flexible, we are human, we know the circumstances of the, you know, newcomers and people and and the fees really, it's, 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 it's low, it's uh, $50 a week, but we say always, if you cannot uh, pay it, come and we will figure it out. And I think it's uh, thanks to the United Church and other uh, donors, we, we got the opportunity to welcome, since 2016, I'm here and 
and I started to work with the newcomers and the uh, uh, family families and welcomed them around the 50, 60 Syrian refugee kids when they just came for free. Uh, last two years, we welcomed again, uh, first year, 28 refugee from Ukraine. Last year, two twenty seven for uh, uh, um, for free. And this is, gives them really the way, the beginning of the new life to, to know, hey, we, we have an opportunity and we can do it. Thank you. Thanks, Anwar. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you, for offering. Uh, yeah, your uh, your contacts. Um, wondering if we could maybe next talk about the importance of camping ministry. Uh, I'm wondering if you could each take us a an opportunity to tell us why, in in your experience, why engaging and empowering young people is so crucial, and, and what it is about camp that makes it such a perfect context for doing that. Um, Jen, Janice, I wonder if we could uh, we could go to you first. Yeah, for sure. We often say that our ministry at Camp Kidston is not about big things, but about all the small things mm -hmm. um, that happen at camp, the small moments of connection or of caring um, or of just existing in creation. So that looks like, you know, being with people and being a place where everyone is able to be their true selves without fear of judgment. Um, that looks like learning to live in community and to show kindness and compassion and understanding to everyone that's around us. Um, that looks like learning to experience joy in stepping away from our daily regular routines, you know, stepping away from our cell phones and all of that technology and engaging in new opportunities and fun. Um, that also looks like growth and development, encouraging children and youth and staff as well to build their confidence, to build respect, to build leadership skills um, through personal challenge and, and learning. Um, and that also looks like just taking time to exist in the creation that's around us, providing um, children and youth a chance to experience the wonder of nature and experience something that is bigger than themselves. Um, and with that in mind, all of those small things come together. Um, we believe that's important because our youth exist and are navigating an ever-changing world. There's, I think we can all acknowledge that there's a lot going on these days. So being able to welcome them to a safe space at camp where they can experience these things is really vital. And hopefully in doing that, we're then empowering them to continue being change makers um, when they return to their own communities at home. So um, that's how we see camp fitting into um, and playing a vital role in the, the roles of children and, and youth today. That's fabulous. Th thank you so much, Janice. Um, and Anwar, um, from a very different context, we'd love to uh, love to hear hear what what that means to you. Oh, it's um, you know, it's, I experienced this with my my twins. I have a twins, although now twenty one. But when they when we came here, just uh, twenty uh, twelve, you know, with big expectation, with big uh, to realize the dreams that once you get out of the plane you will find the heaven there outside. Mm -hmm. But facing the reality, it's not really like that. And and um, working with kids mainly, if 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 they have, as you say, the genesis, that they have the confidence and the more than that, the sense of belonging that they this is a place really can 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 understand them, can give them the opportunity to to play because add to the cultural diversity the language is a barrier too and once they find a place that uh, 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 approach those kids and they feel safe they go back to their families and the atmosphere at the at the family at the houses is is positive so the 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 role of the camp or the councils at the camp really to create a, an ambience a space for those kids and for their families because don't forget that the, the, the kids, they have families, they have a big challenges. Uh, although Camp Cosmos, I mean, the families there, not all of them uh, refugee newcomers. There's a, a Canadian, uh, uh, born Canadian that they, they have kids and they send uh, their kids here. And this is the place where imagine 26, 27 languages meet at the same place and you have to deal with this, deal with this uh, positively to create the space that everybody uh, find himself uh, really comfortable, that uh, understand. I mean, for last two years, we we had 
uh, around 55 Ukrainian kids. So we needed to really uh, think how we can deal. We don't, we don't speak, I don't speak uh, um, Ukrainian, Russian, but we figured out with the Ukrainian community to hire, not to hire, to have a, a volunteer that really helped us with the translation. So doing um, efforts, social efforts with positive energy to create this uh, space where the kids have fun, the families, they are really, uh, you know, start the first step in, in Montreal with the, with the, uh, with a place with a positive energy to continue their integration uh, uh, process. I mean, working with 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 kids um, now, especially with you know, with the uh, in new uh, in new uh, the iPhones, the internet, the the media, the social media also give them a break during the day. There's no phone. Focus on the human. Focus in the environment. The problem that we we have the intercultural the diversity so this is also it's a relief for the parents and the kids themselves no phones focus in the humans and what really things that concern everybody of us during the days and sometimes we do, we cannot find time to speak with our kids about them so touching those issues social issues injustice. Um, Taking care of the 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 environment, even the space. Once you those kids feel this is my place, this is my city, mm. they're gonna be more 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 careful to to even to contribute back. And we we could uh, speak about that. That from Camp Cosmos participant, they came as a CITs as a, a volunteer, and then we hired them. So this kind of a really good connection. We we see it each day. Thank you so much, Anwar. Yeah, what a great reminder that that at camp we we don't just minister to children; we minister to entire families um, and and to entire communities. Uh, thank you, thank you for that reminder. Um, Brendan, we'd love to hear what that looks like at Sparrow Lake. Thank you. That's a tough act to follow, Anwar. Thank you for that. That's uh, that's wonderful. Um, this is a, a great question. One, it was the first question I really asked myself when I started working at Spare Lake Camp. Like, what does camp ministry look like? What should it look like? What can it look like? And uh, it was through listening to a podcast with Richard Rohr, and he was talking about, you know, how do we teach kids about God? How do we teach kids about their connection uh, to the infinite and all of that amazing stuff? And his answer was that we need to make kids feel cared for. We need to make kids feel like they belong somewhere, that they're part of something, that they're special, that they're important. We need to treat them with that respect and uh, creating a space outside of the home where kids can experience those things, I think is one of the most important things about camp. I think it's it's in the uh, what we might refer to as the hidden curriculum of camp. It's not something we're here to announce and hey, kids, you all you're all cared for. Um, we want to show them that they're cared for. We want to <laughs> feed them good food. We want to you know show them great activities. We want to. Uh, show them the sunshine and the outdoors and, and give them a great experience where we take a lot of steps and a lot of effort to work with them and provide them with a sense of belonging. It's always a challenge for us. It's always something that we're always trying to do better at. And again, that kind of constant improvement is what keeps me coming back to camp. But I think that's really the heart and the core of the, the hidden curriculum of camp. Then on top of that, uh, and I think Jana spoke to it, and Anwar spoke to it as well, is that ability to live an experience of community and an experience of community outside of their home that isn't just their parents uh, who you know have to love them and have to care for them. <laughs> I mean, as a parent, I know I <laughs> we don't have to, but we just do. I mean, that's that's what. Uh, parenting is all about, but being able to go out on your own independently into a community, to be invited into it, to invite others into it, and to experience what it means to be in what our mission statement describes as a Christian community, I think is really, really important to kids. Um, from there, with that sense of belonging and that sense of being cared for, that sense of being valuable, I think kids 
have the opportunity to explore further if they want. They can go on a, a, a further faith journey. And I think they're doing it with a good foundation that, that I really truly believe is is just the truth of you know what what this world is all about. So that's why I think it's really important to me. Thank you for that. For all three of you, such such wonderful answers. And, and I mean, I hope our 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 watchers and our audience like catches how much how much thoughtful intentionality um, goes into the creating uh, of camp and and figuring out how all those pieces work together. That's that's something I so deeply admire about those who dedicate their lives to camping ministry. Um, and and even theologically, as as Brendan pointed us towards, like that that deep incarnational experience of the the embodied experience um, that young people get to experience. Um, that, that that's so wonderful. Thank thank you all. Um, want to want to talk um, about specific needs that you're in your communities that your camp is seeking to and 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 is able to address. Um, and Anwar, maybe we we can start to you. You you you've sort of alluded to this with with work around refugees and newcomers. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think it's each year we have difficult, uh, uh, different uh, challenges, different uh, uh, needs that we see with the community, and it starts with the uh, registration or process. Uh, I would say that the parents, they are also part of the organization thinking board. I would say, for the Camp Cosmos, some of them even uh, a board member and and. Um, we we work together. We see that those needs, for example, uh, once while the uh, Syrian community uh, came here, most of them were, uh, let's say, uh, Muslims, okay? And the Camp Cosmos uh, was at the church. And for many uh, families, many individuals, the first time that they come and enter a church from the side door. Usually they do it as a tourist from the St. Catherine Street, from the main uh, door, the big door, the large door. And that, it's different when they come in through the uh, side door. It's dark, church. We know that it's a, there's no light there. So they, 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 they have a question, what I'm doing here? Well, is it necessary that we send our kid to this kind of, of camp? Because, I mean, every one of us has a bag of stereotypes. And once you get just a small hole from this bag to release those stereotypes, the, the, the fear, because everybody has human fear from things that we do not know. And I think it's being uh, uh, open or, or to know the, that you will have those challenges, it's uh, bring you a position that you're ready to deal with those openness, to, to share with the families, to speak with, with the families to make a kind of a orientation to meet the parents before the camp starts. Or for example, that we have uh, Ukrainian and Russian kids uh, together at the Camp Cosmos with what is going now uh, there to, to speak with, with the parents too. Add to that, uh, uh, as I, I, I mentioned before, the expectation uh, the fear from the new reality, the new places. Uh, you know, I'm sending my kids to the Camp Cosmos, which is the church, Christian. Hey, they can influence him and can he become a Christian or a secular or none really related to the uh, um, my own religion. And I think it's all those, you know, hesitations, challenges disappear once they meet the staff, once they meet the coordinator, once they meet the counselors. Wait, they meet us that we 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 respect the diversity that we this place can really um, can bring together diverse backgrounds, diverse languages, diverse faiths, believers, secular. We we don't we don't go really in the individual beliefs. And once I think it's uh, you, Brendan said, once they feel the sense of belonging, hey, this is this place. Could could be also mine. I feel this is, can represent my my you know my 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 hopes, my my intentions, my willing to send the kid um, to learn new things. They take breath and really relax, and the the way of thinking starts different. And and I mean we have many many uh, experience with the families at the beginning was hesitation, fear, 
I'm doing my kids here, sending my kids there. And once they see the kids coming back happy to their home with no influence, nobody told him to become a Muslim or to become a Christian or, or switch a religion or something like that. This is with, again, uh, uh, Kim, you mentioned that, that it's, a, it's not just for the kids. It's for the kids and for their parents, for people that they know that they send their kids uh, next year to the Camp Cosmos, and then they want uh, them, this kid to continue to be a, a, a CIT and then counselor, mm -hmm. and then to be around to volunteer with MCM events. Oh, it's outside. It's a noisy. <laughs> Sorry. So, so it's it's a more than just an activity for the kid, but a place where can really. Uh, bring together different families because we see families and kids from Camp Cosmos coming to other events to the MCM. They feel this kind of a sense of belonging. This is the place, it's mine too. And I want to be a positive contributor, uh, 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 someone that really brings new ideas and be listened to, not just speaking and nobody listen there. Once you have this kind of a collaboration, understanding that parents see that their say is is there it's uh listen uh spoken about it's make it easy for everybody to resolve the challenges that i think every camp uh, summer camp faces oh, th thank you Omar. yeah and, and and thank you for sharing that and, and as we move it over to, to to brendan first and then to janice um you know anwar the Camp Cosmos is located like right within a very specific urban urban neighborhood, and and so Brendan and and Janice, you're you're serving, I imagine, multiple catchment areas. So I, I wonder, as you, what needs in the different communities that you serve, um, have you been able to address through camp? So maybe Brendan. Great, you keep putting me after Anwar. It's just uh, his answers are so fantastic, and thank you for that. Um, it, with with camp, as you can imagine, there's just the you know the basic need for childcare, for someone to take the kids for a week and do it in an affordable way. So we have our, our rates are reflective of what it costs to run a nonprofit camp. And as I'm sure you can imagine, that is a, a fair amount of money. It's not cheap mm -hmm. to do what we do. These buildings don't put new roofs on them themselves and they don't paint themselves and they don't keep themselves out of the dirt and from rotting and all of these sorts of things. So we have a lot of things that we need to take care of. We also have a lot of staff who need to come to the camp every year. There's 65 of them. So we do offer camp to people who aren't able to otherwise afford it. We have a decent fund each year that allows us to give subsidies to families who need them so that we can bring people from the entire community. Uh, and that represents pretty much around Toronto and as well as around a lot of Southern Ontario as well. So we have kids coming from rural communities um, in and around the camp area, as well as in Toronto and even as far away as London, Ontario or Hamilton and up to Cornwall and, and that area. So the kids come from all over and uh, we try and make sure that there's an affordable and, and quality childcare option for people. That's the need I think that we give to the parents um, but also a childcare option that isn't just uh, like, you know, putting a big sugary lollipop in their mouth and uh, giving them everything. We want to make sure that it's a fun time and everything, but we also want to give that quality to the parents as well. So the camp, we do not have phones. So there's no kids walking around with cell phones or anything like that. Uh, they're there to commit, connect with each other, communicate with each other authentically. That's one of our big aims. We want to give kids the opportunity to explore a wide variety of different activities. So there's something that catches everyone from the arts to the physical to the water sports and all of those. Um, and like I said before, we really try and focus a lot on community building and relationship building in camp. I've done surveys with parents a lot, and uh, the top two things that parents want for their kids is for them to have fun and for them to make friends. And those two things are things that uh, I think all parents want, and so that's a big thrust for us at the camp. In addition to the, the core family stuff, we also have a lot of community groups 
groups that come and use the space in our shoulder season. Uh, our summer camp only runs for two months, and there really is, uh, you know, probably about six to eight months, depending on how rustic you want to be, of usable time at the camp. So we open it up to community groups and who come and use it. And we have a lot of demand for that. And we have a lot of community groups who come and they feel at home here. And uh, we have one group um, of individuals with uh, medical challenges who've been to other different places and they didn't really feel like they belonged there, but they came to Spare Lake Camp and they really felt a great connection with us and with our staff and uh, they're coming back again this year. So we're really touched by that, as well as uh, other groups from uh, smaller churches and uh, other faiths who don't necessarily have a retreat center or something like that to use. So they can come and use the camp too. So it's not only just a summer camp, but also a space for community groups to come and use it and uh, have the connection that uh, we offer here at Spare Lake Camp. Thanks, Brennan. Thanks. Yeah, Janice, what, uh, what needs in uh, community are you, uh, are you seeking to address at, uh, at Camp Kitson? Yeah, uh, similar similar to both Anwar and, and Brendan, um, I think especially in this post-pandemic uh, world, I know someone was going to say it at some point, uh, and I will be that person, that need for, for connection and for community has become more important than ever. So just being able to be a safe space for kids and youth to get back outside again um, and to, to live in community and to, to learn those skills again and that time they lost out on during the pandemic when we were all sort of locked up at home. Um, like both Brendan and Anwar as well, we offer quite an extensive sponsorship program. Um, so we work really hard to make sure that kids and youth in our communities who whose families wouldn't otherwise be able to afford summer camp have the opportunity to come. And in any given year, um, about a third to a half of our campers come either on sponsorship or on some sort of subsidy. Um, so that's a core component of us serving our community and ensuring that everyone has access to, to opportunities in the community. Um, in recent years, we've also been trying to serve uh, groups that have been historically underserved in the outdoor rec and, and camping communities. Um, for us in particular, uh, we've started a 2SLGBTQ plus uh, camp program for uh, queer youth in our communities. And while they're welcome to attend any of our programs all summer long, um, ensuring that they have a specific program as well where they can um, feel safe and feel celebrated and know that they're an important part of our community, even if they haven't um, historically been represented very well mm -hmm. in, um, again, in the outdoor rec and, and camping communities. Um, and like Brendan as well, we we serve off uh, season community groups too. We are in a rural part of Nova Scotia. So um, being able to provide the community with um, a recreation facility that's um, accessible and um, that they can use throughout the year is is also an important um, way that we we serve our community. And I think as time goes on, we continue to dream bigger and we continue to talk with our community about how we can continue to serve them and continue to meet needs, um, you know, as they change and as new things come up. And uh, the foundation has, has been a really vital part of that because the foundation has often um, through grants supported that work of being able to dream bigger and being able to run new programs for different groups um, or meet the community's needs in in, in new and and different ways. So, well, and, and Janice, thanks for thanks for naming the foundation because that's where, where we're going to go next. And, and maybe I'll, I'll toss it back to you for, for this question. We'll kind of go in reverse order. I was wondering if you um, because you, you three have been invited here both because you you offer leadership in amazing um, ministries and and have this amazing ability to articulate the importance of camp. Um, but you're also invited here specifically because you represent ministries that have received grants um, from the United Church uh, Foundation. Um, so maybe starting with Janice, uh, maybe you could describe the process of coming to the decision to apply for a grant through the foundation. How did that align with the vision uh, and goals of your of your project? And, and then how has the support from the foundation helped you uh, grow with your community? Uh, so yeah, Janice first. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, Brendan kind of alluded to this, but uh, we we all operate as nonprofits, so. Um, 
you know, we're on a, we're on a pretty tight budget. Uh, we can't, we can't lie about that. So I think we're always seeking grant opportunities um, or other opportunities for funding within the community. But the UCC Foundation had, was a very natural fit because they are promoting things that very much directly align with what we're also doing. So, you know, promoting children and youth, um, promoting outreach to the community, allowing us to, to try these new ideas um, and these new ways of outreach and encouraging us to, to just go for it. And so it was, again, just a very natural um, sort of uh, process uh, or decision to apply for a grant uh, with the foundation. And actually in the last five years, um, we've received a few different grants for a few different projects, um, ranging from upgrading our kitchen and our food service abilities to um, a new program for teens um, that focuses around wilderness and environmental sustainability um, to supporting better supporting mental health needs at camp for our campers and staff. So we've uh, we've worked with a number of different projects with the foundation um, and received grants for a number of different projects with the foundation. Um, and this support from the foundation has has been vital in, I mean, first of all, allowing those projects to succeed, but on, on the larger scale, allowing us to grow within the community because we're able to serve more people, um, because we're able to better meet the needs of um, children and youth um, in our in our communities, um, and because we're we're ultimately able to to better support um, the the community that's around us. So. The, the foundation has been very vital in that process and um we're we're very thankful for for the support that that they provide yeah Brendan and then Anwar um love to hear uh what brought you to uh apply for the foundation and how it's impacted uh your ministry so Brendan oh, great so <clears throat> well like I said our cabins are 97 years old mm. and uh, we have about 42 buildings on this site and if we add it all up between all of our cabins and our buildings I, I took this photo of this roof and this cabin needs a new roof and it is getting one this year uh but uh there's just so much that we need to take care of at the camp and to be able to offer camp to families at an affordable rate that is less than a thousand dollars a week you know we need to be able to look for other sources of revenue to help support that and offset the costs of just keeping the place uh, in working order, really. <clears throat> um, so there are foundations and, and places that we look to for that. And, and just keeping our camp together costs us about $100,000 a year just in repairing mm -hmm. and replacing equipment and kitchen stuff and dishwashers and fridges and everything that's just involved here. Uh, so like I said, it, in my first uh, answer, one of the things that I've been working to uh, develop at the camp has been the faith formation aspect of the camp and the faith-centered programs at the camp. And I love to get my hands on resources and find new tools and games and activities and things for kids to do and uh, staff to do uh, through training and uh, through kind of creating lived experiences of uh, things like community and lived experiences of things like how big the universe is and those sorts of things. So I am in need of all sorts of program supplies and the United Church of Canada Foundation is a great fit for getting those sorts of things, especially as they relate to uh, to the theological mission of the church too. So to me, that was kind of a no brainer in, in uh, working with the, with the church to get those things. And we also work with a bunch of other different grant uh, opportunities that are out there that do things like capital and building and uh, staffing is another one. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of money from the government of Canada to help our staff. So there you go. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, and what, uh, what drew uh, y'all to uh, to apply for uh, grants through the foundation and, and how has the foundation helped you uh, grow your community? You know, I think it's in the principle, it's very important to have a foundation uh, to support the community uh, work. And I'm happy that the uh, uh, United Church of Canada also support all the organizations that really um, in need and they work with the community. 
uh, the Camp Cosmos, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a program of the MCM, which is Ministry of the United Church. Because this is, you know, legami, this is a, a relationship. It's very important to because we 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 rely on the in the foundation and the, the grant that we receive from the UCC. Uh, we uh, um, got um, uh, uh, funds for the uh, accessibility program where we allow families and newcomers, refugees, you know, all the challenges that they have already. Imagine if some of them they have um, kids with disability. So with this fund, with this really application that we we sent to the foundation, we allow number of families to have uh, to send their kids to the Camp Cosmos, where that they need uh, physical support, they need uh, 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 shadows to be to be there. So thanks to the uh, uh, foundation, really we we have this those families and we provide them with the with the uh, 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 spaces with the. Uh, needed support physically, psychologically, sometimes emotionally, and again, it's we see the camp cosmos. It's beyond the kids. Sometimes we, we we deal with the families. We we stay after four o'clock. We we call the families. We speak with them. We invite them to other programs. It's I'm I'm coming back to what I said before. It's a it's not just summer camp of six weeks. It's you building a relationship. Some of the families that we work with them. They got to know us through Camp Cosmos, but the relation just starts there. And I think it's a, uh, thanks to the uh, support of the uh, UCC, we we can we can remain in contact with them. We can help them uh, after the Camp Cosmos because the problems there. It's you know they won't disappear when the when the camp uh, uh, finishes after six weeks. So you have the rest of things to do. And and uh, um, yeah, it's it's important to to have this also a theological connection between Camp Cosmos and the the United Church, as I mentioned before. It's the diversity of the parents, the diversity of the kids, the faith that they come here to the Camp Cosmos. Once add to all of that that the Camp Cosmos is part of the United Church, I think it's a add more element more facilitating element for those families to, hey, we are in a different world. We we start a new rea reality that, you know, I'm, I'm saying now principles, but it's to accept each other and be really in a space where where everybody has has the voice to say. And and being part of the United Church, a minister of the United Church, this is value. It's very important also to to tell the parents that, uh, that uh, fact. So yeah, I mean it's it's really we we are we rely very much on the foundation and and we are happy that we are, we're receiving funds in the last years. Well, thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, we've got a couple of questions from our our uh, our audience that that have come here, and uh, I, I'm going to start with this one, and, and I love this question because um, it points to something that I, I firmly believe that that the rest of the church can learn so much from what. People have developed and learned um, at camp. And, and so this is the question. It sounds like you've all made a safe and inclusive space for all to take part in their fullest. Are there any learnings or tips that you can share um, that others can use in other ministries to also make this happen? And maybe we'll just open that up for any of you who'd like to, uh, any of the three of you who'd like to offer something there. Not the easy question. I'll take a, a shot at it. Um, I, I think one of the most difficult things for us to do is to forget ourselves in a way, mm -hmm. to stop making it about us, um, to start listening to the people that we serve. Uh, one of the things that I can think about at Sparrow Lake Camp, and I was just talking to someone about it today, are the, some of the things and the traditions that we do in the camp that may not have always been the things that serve the kids the most. Um, you know, pranking or making loud noises or screaming mm -hmm. and shouting in the first thing in the morning or um, having games that are only you can only win by running all the time or um, 
you know, we can think of, you could probably think of a lot of them for the context that you're thinking of uh, within a church or, or what have you, but to look at the things that we value and question them and to ask whether or not these things are things that really actually serve the people that we want to serve or whether or not they're things that just kind of serve ourselves and our own mm -hmm. traditions. That I think is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned and, and one of the hardest things to do that we've done in terms of trying to center things around the kids. Oh, I love that. I mean, that's fabulous. Thank you. Dennis. Yeah, and um, that's kind of what popped into, into my mind. Something very similar to Brendan is just to not be scared to try new things and um, again, to do things that are untraditional, which kind of relates back to Brendan's point. Um, I think at, at camps, we are so used to that, you know, worship at camp can be first thing in the morning or last thing at night or any time during the day. Um, and the things we learn at camp can can take place anywhere. Um, we're in a non-traditional setting. Mm. Um, and we can try things. We can experiment things. The kids can experiment with things. And I think sometimes we get stuck in the mindset of, um, you know, like, I'm sure we all, for example, go to church on Sunday mornings, and that is a vital part of our faith for many of us, and that's fantastic. But um, church doesn't only have to be on Sunday mornings in a building. Church can also be at 1 p.m. in a canoe in the middle of a lake. Um, and so I think camp has really challenged me and our community to to consider, you know, what church can be and what worship can be and um how we can step beyond beyond our kind of like traditional perceptions of those things um and challenge ourselves to to try new things and to keep learning and keep growing there um, and maybe maybe we'll move on to the next question and, and anwar will invite you to to answer that um we've heard so many great learnings um and we're gonna we're gonna talk about hope in a minute but but i think it's important to name name challenges because this is the difficult moment um moment for camps and, and so so what are the what are the greatest challenges uh, that United Church Camps and United Church Camping is facing right now? The challenges. I think it's a foundation, the resources. This is the main uh, um, challenge that we really face, especially if we have more and more families that cannot uh, afford it to pay the weekly payment because we see outside the payment for the, you know, the fees, it's around $300 here in Montreal a week. Mm -hmm. While we 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 say that it's a fifty sixty dollars a week. I think it's uh, more than the you know financial issue. It's um uh, it's a uh, um the approach of the camp, the staff members too. Because sometimes you know those young people who work at the camp cosmos, they have a or any camp or any work. They have you know agenda in their mind, but coming to the site with the with the 20, 25 uh, different uh, cultures, uh, languages, you need to be deep relaxed with really no no stereotypes, no clean sheet to start a, a, a day. And this is, it's every day, there's many challenges with kids, with parents, with uh, screaming, with um, languages. So the support, the professional support, the 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 um the staff members in need it's really it's 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 a lot requires a lot of resources too with training with find the the professional people to support them during their their work because otherwise in one week they will burn out and it's going to be a regular camp summer camp and i believe that always i say i i show off guys that see we have something different we have w we deal with people, with the humans, and the humans they do mistakes. They do. They have stereotypes. They 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 come with 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 one million uh, fears, hesitations. So if our staff really are ready and aware of those challenges, we could face them in the in the best mm. way. To to again, I'm 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 bringing always the parents in because it's. Summer camp. It's not just for the for the kids. It's for the satisfaction of the parents too, because having kids happy at the camp, they will go back happy. The parents next day will come happy. The staff will be happy, 
and the opposite the same. So I think those challenges that we we deal with them, we we try to do our best, but always to remember that there's a place where you can do mistakes, that place that we can each day we learn new things and patient, patient, patient is the key. Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, the just the challenges of working in these complex environments that are camps. Um, you know, I, I remember uh, I remember you say, say to our staff, like, you know. The day before the first camper arrives, like everything's just perfect. And then what friends, like tomorrow morning, a bunch of X factors are going to show up. And depending on what has happened the night before or the way they're feeling or how the chicken fingers land in their bellies, things are going to go in, <laughs> in massively different directions. Um, so we're going to end with with hope. But but if, um, Anwar, you mentioned so articulately, like the need, the desire to balance both the financial challenges of running uh, running these complex organisms with 97 year old cabins and and staff and food and all the different things in these amazing sites um and also wanting to keep it affordable um so Janice and Brendan, do you want to say anything more about that before we kind of uh end end with some hope and end with uh the hopes for the future yeah i i maybe i actually i wanted to go back one question too, uh, and this also ties into everything, but there's a great book called An Altar in the World by Barbara Brown Taylor. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in the idea of alternative ministry, I'd really urge you to read it uh, because it speaks to exactly what Janice was talking about, that that we can connect with God right there. Um, that's where it can happen. And uh, it it really is just about creating space for people um, without expectation, where they can meet the world around them on their own terms. And that, I think, is one of the biggest challenges that we have, because like mm -hmm. Anwar said, there are so many preconceptions that people have about church or about Christianity or about the United Church or whatever. Um, and and that can be from so many different reasons. Like you said, it could just be how they woke up this morning or something they saw on the news yesterday or whatever. But um you know, reinforcing this idea that people really are truly welcome here without judgment. They're, we're not here to um, change anyone. We're here to mm -hmm. let the world around them change them. We're here to let them change themselves. And that's really what it's about to me. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you for that. That's so beautiful. Um, with our final few minutes, we we would love to like this final question. I think seems like the best place uh, for us to end. Uh, one of our panel or one of our audience members has asked all the panelists, "What do you think your camp will look like in five years? And what are your hopes and your dreams for the future of your camp?" So we we'd love you to each to take uh to take take a take a little bit and tell us about uh, the future. Um, Janice, maybe maybe you could tell us like what you hope for Camp Kitson to to look like in five years. Yeah, for sure. And apologies, my uh, my Wi-Fi did freeze up there on the last one. Um, I think uh, for me, just to start on a personal note, I have so much hope for the future of camping because I have this amazing privilege that is working with young people, working with our staff, um, and they care so much about camp. Uh, they care so much about the community around camp. Um, they care so much about each other. And that is what motivates me every day to to keep doing what I do, you know, sort of behind the scenes, keeping camp running um, is because of them. They, mm -hmm. um, they have so much hope for the future and they give me so much hope for the future because we really do have um, these amazing children and youth that are growing up through, through all of our camps across the country. Um, as for Kidston, we, we hope to continue to grow and to expand and to adapt, um, kind of like Brendan was saying and, and Anwar as well, listening to our community so that we can continue to serve our community in the ways that that best fit the community around us. Um, and I know that uh, the, the United Church of Canada Foundation will likely continue to play a role in that as well, just uh, knowing that starting new projects often requires funding and, and that kind of thing. So um, we are very hopeful for the future. Um, I think everyone has has a reason and I hope everyone can share in, in that hope, um, knowing that there are amazing, amazing young people doing fantastic things in United Church camping um, across the country. Love it. Thanks so much, Janice. 
Brendan, uh, five years from now, hopes for uh, uh, Sparrow Lake and United Church Camping as a whole? I think the vision is is really that of a longer table. Mm. It's it's that of just having more kids, more people, more groups, um, just more, uh, but not necessarily more money. We're nonprofit. We, we want to take everything and put it back into the community, uh, but it is to have more people. Uh, in order to get there, we definitely do have some uh, capital challenges that we need to overcome. We need to work on our washrooms. We need to work on water. We need mm -hmm. to work on keeping these 97 year old buildings alive, um, our dining hall, our rec hall, just the amount of space we have. So we're gonna be working through some of those challenges. We were fortunate enough to get a grant from the Trillium Foundation last year to have an architect come in and look at the camp and help us reimagine what it could look like. And they came up with some really ingenious ways of helping us do that quite affordably, uh, all things considered, it's still a lot of money that we need to put together. But um, yeah, the vision of the future is definitely to just help us rearrange this space a little bit just so that we can fit more people in it. That's what it is for me. Awesome. Thank, thanks so much. And thanks for reminding us that like the brilliance of camp directors is being able to know about like incarnational theology and also like plumbing you know, water <laughs> systems and like basic structural engineering. Uh, I mean, am amazing skill sets that are contained within our camp directors. Thank you for that. Um, Anwar, uh, quickly from you, what's, uh, what is your dream uh, for five years from now uh, for Manam, Manam Ensemble? Um, you know, I would us. say, I would add to what Brendan and Janice say that the hope is for me now is the same of the challenge. It's the resources, the financial situation. Mm -hmm. If you really secure the money so I can go and dream for five years in a way that really it's the main challenge is, is the resources. So once uh, um, you have uh, secured those money, so you could really think different way. You think, focus, uh, or put your energy in developing the the programs the details of the camp cosmos or any any camp of uh, 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 for the details the challenge is again the hope that secure the resources for the summer camp wonderful yeah thank, thank you. you thank you all for, i mean friends this is this has just been wonderful um uh, audience members we've just been in, in the presence of such amazing uh, visionary people representing such amazing um uh, ministry. If if we were at any of the camps I've ever directed, I would invite you to give them a round of applause or to uh, offer a uh, American Sign Language uh, thank you. So so thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to hear about the great work that these camps are doing. And such a huge thank you to our panelists. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Anwar. Thank you, Janice, for sharing your experiences, your learnings, and your hope for the future of of the work that you do. Um, friends, I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic. Uh, rest of your day, um, do something awesome for someone awesome, um, just as we would at camp. Blessings as you go, friends.